Hey everyone, and welcome to the Broken by Concept podcast, episode 61. Um, we just got back from the gym, back out of lockdown again, which is good. Um, remember, we had someone um, say, I remember in one of the mailbags, um, he said he wanted to, us to talk about our gym a little bit. Okay. Give updates and stuff. So we, we changed our whole routine. Yeah, we started a new routine. So on my Discord, we have like a this fitness channel and there's a a guy, it's like a PT and he gives a lot of great advice. Yeah. And then this, awesome, for some man. reason, this article got like sent around. Yeah. And it's like, a, it was a website and it was called 5 by 5 Strength, 5 times 5 Strength or 5 by 5 pa- Power. I don't know what it was, something like that. And... um. And it was basically this guy and he spoke about the, this, this specific uh, program for building strength. And um, it's really simple. And it's what we're doing now. And then I, I thought it was really interesting at the time, but we're kind of doing our routine or our program. But then with lockdown, I was thinking, let's just, I kind of want to build more strength. I care more about strength rather than like the aesthetics. Oh, so of this, it. this was spawned from some guy in your Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh-huh. then a few people started doing that. Because it's like really straightforward. It's simple compound it's exercises. It's really simple. And Wait, and so can you explain? Because um, I, I didn't really wrap my head around what a compound exercise was. Well, it's not isolated. It's not just like... So when you're a machine... Yeah, you're doing like one muscle usually. Yeah. So it's like you think of like a... You think of like one of those, um, you know, the leg curl machine or whatever. It's just like one muscle. But with 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 compound exercises, it's like multiple. It's like a, it's like a dynamic a movement. Yeah, it's like multiple... Yeah, it's, and there's no, there's nothing keeping you in place in a way. It's like you got to. Why is that better? Well, it just. It, I, I mean, I don't really better? know. I don't really know the. the, the I'm, dude, I didn't study sports science or anything like that. Okay. But all I know is that they're better for building um, strength. Strength, but also yeah, overall because it does multiple muscles. Like everything comes from your core and stuff like that. So, um, anyway, I just read the goddamn website. Follow the steps that it says, and it has an app as well, which makes it super simple. Yeah, the apps. I love the app. The app's awesome. It just tracks and and. Actually, if you went on it right now, Nathan, I'm pretty sure on the app, it actually, once you have at least three days in, I think it can track your improvement. Oh, really? Yeah, click the middle thing. See? See that if you click the progress, there's like a progress thing. So, see how it says in the middle oh. here? So, this squat progress, bench, because I haven't only done one day of bench, and then dead. Yeah. See that? So, you can actually, over time, you actually get to see your progress. But right now, it's just a vertical upwards. Because we've only ever, yeah. I haven't plateaued yet. Yeah. But you, I'm sh- if you do this for months, you'll see like, oh shit, I plateau here you for a bit. progress over time. I thought that's really cool. Um, so, it's all com- super convenient on this app. And the app's just called um, Five Times Five. Here we go. It's called Strong Lifts. And it's got like a five times five on it. So, we're doing like really, and that's the thing I love about this. Again, we'll say three days a week as well. I'm super skeptical about it because I'm like this because you know because literally the progression of the thing is like you add 2.5 kilos. It was actually really funny. uh, We had had someone in my Discord who's recently Jesse recently went to the gym right, and we have some maybe we have some PT guys or people that know a bit bit about it in in my Discord. But I think he's literally saying like he was like like he did like. Uh, one weight and then he was like gonna go to the 15 kilos out of this. <laughs> and then he's like is that like bad is that yeah, yeah yeah and it was funny because it's like it's like he's gaining like 300 LP in like a day yeah, you yeah, know? yeah it's like that's not how it works I mean at the start it's really difficult uh, like getting into it because you just don't you, you need someone ideally yeah. like for me I had my brother and you I had I knew a bit so like I was able to teach you some stuff well, we originally did your brother's routine yeah 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 my brother helped me with that one which is pretty solid it was it was good It's but it's again it's less about I don't think it's the best way to build strength. I think it's more about like aesthetics in a way. Um, So anyway, I mean, we haven't cracked this. We're only just started, but it's three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I think it like slightly rotates between like four differing days. So it's like the same for like four days, I think, or three days. And then you swap to the, another rotation of exercises, but it's all the same exercises. It's like bench press, squat, deadlift, overhead press, and like barbell row. That's like all it is. Yeah. And I love that, the simplicity in that. Yeah, it's just super simple. It's like you just perfect the form on all these. Yeah. That's what we're and I actually bought a book recently um, by Mark Ripito. Um, he's like an old school, like a barbell training, weightlifting dude. And I bought a book to learn more about like the actual physiology science, and science right. behind how, how it all works. I, I want to like understand it more. Yeah. But that's basically it, right? I mean, that's kind of where we're at. So right. we'll give an update, I guess, and we'll see how the program works. Yeah. It's st- it has stood the test of time. This program it was it was I think it was made like 
10 years ago. That's a very good indication. And it's still doing really well. And people getting results. I look on the YouTube yeah. comments of the initial video that was done and people are loving it. So give it a go, I guess. I'm just scared to just plateau, dude. And then I'm like, oh, God damn it, dude. You know? I mean, maybe some PTs watching this and they can give it a read. Uh, what, what I'll try, maybe I can put the article. I'll put the article in yeah. the description. You haven't even seen me this article. Haven't I? No. Oh, okay. It probably helps for you to read it. I think yeah. I did. I swear I did at the did beginning. You? Oh, maybe I just looked at it. Maybe over. you just didn't read it. the app. Yeah, well, it's actually good because it answers like every question you would possibly have. Ah. Like, what if I plateau? Ah, what if I'm sore? Question. What should I eat? Yeah. Um, it says everything. Okay. It's, it's literally like, it, it's like a thesis. Got it. It's yeah. like, how do you, how to do this properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. Um, yeah, that's basically it. We'll, I'll, I'll chuck that in the description. Yeah, for people interested. Um, so today, Nathan, I wanted to talk a little bit about competition, just competitiveness. This is not just, you know, we're not talking about competition in terms of, you know, NA. We're not talking about any of that. This is just not esports. It's not esports. It's just competing. Now, I started watching after someone recommended it to me in the Discord, the F1 documentary series thing on Netflix. It's, it, I think it's called like Drive to something. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. It's, it's incredible. I only watched the first two episodes last night. I mean, night. I've seen it around. I haven't watched it, but I've seen it. Like, I was looking at it like, because I always thought that Formula 1 was just pay to win. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I knew jack shit. I knew mm. nothing. Mm. I didn't even know there was pay to win. But there is an element of pay to win. Like the top three, the, the three teams that pay the most money or put the most, invest the most money in their car, having a significant advantage. But having the good driver kind of evens it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it is a bit, I think the top three teams kind of win every it's year. Like a it's like Mercedes, um, like the Red Bull team and like maybe Ferrari or something. I'm, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I'm just getting into it and I'm loving it. Highly recommend it. For those of you who need something to watch, it's it's incredible so far. Wish I got onto it sooner, to be honest with you. And um, anyway, it got me thinking about com- competition because the the first episode it highlighted it kind of honed in on the the top Australian driver who at the time was I don't know if he still is was driving for Red Bull top team. He's an Aussie from Perth. His name I think his name was Mark Ricardo. Mike Ricardo. Mark Ricardo. Daniel Ricardo. Daniel Ricardo, that's his name. Um, and he spoke about how, like, the, he spoke a little bit about his, like, mindset and how competitive he is and how he, no one else is harder on himself than him. Like, he is the hardest on himself. And, and the theme across a lot of these drivers is how competitive they are. They're ultra competitive people. And they don't shy away from, oh, my God, i got to beat this guy. They like that. They, they enjoy a rivalry. They want to beat that person. They, they, they won't shy away from saying that. And that doesn't really affect their performance. And um, I found that really interesting. So I'm thinking, you look, in solo queue, our whole mantra, Nathan, we talk a lot about, you know, quote unquote, the process and how the process, in a way, it circumvents or it like skips the whole competitive element of the game, doesn't well, you're it? You're against yourself, right? It's you versus yourself. That's yeah. what the process is all about. We're we're removing the, the 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 raw competitive aspect of the game, stripping it bare to it's just you. These are the fundamentals. Uh, you're aiming to play beautiful League of Legends, and the the score that LP takes care of, care of itself. Yep, it's a byproduct it's of a, byproduct a beautiful of, process of beautiful and, process and, and great, fundamentals. Great fundamentals, right? And you're not really. Uh, competing so much against like the other let's say jungler you're more like um adapting and like capitalizing on their mistakes and stuff but it's not like i'm beating this guy like i'm creating a strategy specifically around this person yeah we don't even a lot of the time we we don't even look at the name tags we have no idea well i mean we don't know who the other person is on the side of that yeah we don't even tell people to look at lp so there's literally we've actually stripped away a lot of the competitive it's true aspect of the game Mm. um and it got me thinking you know compete and one of our favorite you know nathan one of our favorite nfl coaches pete carroll from the seattle seahawks you know he always used to talk about how his mantra personal philosophy was you know compete always compete always compete be a better father better coach yeah better father better Better coach better husband you know and i i love that i thought that was super powerful and i thought that was a really cool mantra and how he kind of he like made it into a few words always compete and um and it got me thinking, well, you know, there's probably a lot of people, actually, let, let's start with the people that probably don't like competition. So there's a lot of people that, look, this might be controversial, but I, I think it's pretty safe to say that competitiveness is, is a trait 
that we're born with. You're either a competitive person, you enjoy competition, or you know, you're maybe not that competitive. And that's okay. You know, there's, I don't really think one of you, one of them necessarily has an advantage over the other, but I think you do got to know what you're about. Now, in a way, Nathan, we've been shoving it down people's throat, process, 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 which is great. We know that gets results. Now, for the people that come from a background where they're not that competitive and maybe, you know, they've avoided it at school, they, tr- they may be like more single player stuff. Um, they, they, they didn't, resonate with the whole team sports and just sporting in general they just were kind of by themselves they might have you know clicked with league of legends they might have liked enjoyed league of legends as a concept as a game maybe they had a few friends that played it but they didn't really enjoy the competitive aspect of it i mean i think that that's a huge proportion of the players i would say that's the majority yeah honestly who default to, to league of legends I think there's a they just enjoy the game they enjoy the law they enjoy playing the character but they're not there to like compete it to the top of the ladder no Destroy their opponents. Agreed. So it gets me thinking. That's why I guess our system, if you want to call it that, kind of works with a lot of these players. And I think it is a very healthy way to approach it. Now, that's not everyone though. I reckon there's a percentage. I would say it's a solid percentage. Maybe maybe it's 20%. Maybe it's 25. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's 15. Maybe it's 10%. I don't know. There's a bunch of these people that maybe are ultra competitive or relatively competitive people. And they don't crumble under the pressure when it comes to you know actively recognizing that they are beating and trying trying to beat another person i want to beat this person they enjoy that because let's and let's for a second nathan let's talk about what the benefits might be of taking a second to really bring the competitiveness to the forefront what might some of those you know for you what what do you think some of the benefits might be if if someone if one were to have a healthy relationship with a competitive aspect of the game or competition, what would some potential benefits be? Um, well, I mean, I, this is the part where I struggle with because it's I feel like when you go down that route, you're sort of like comparing in a way as well. You know? Yeah, I don't think you can get away from comparing if you are competing. And I think um, it's only natural, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, that's that's it's natural. But I, again, sometimes I think that, I mean, we look at the John Wooden philosophy, you know, like, he, you know, he talks about he did still scout some teams, but it was very much around them, what they do, their process, the fundamentals. I mean, you could say that that maybe is a bit different. I mean, obviously that's talking about college basketball versus NBA. You know, you talk about, you look at the best teams, the best players, you know, highly ultra competitive, you know, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, they got to the top of that sport. Um, but I think the, the so the benefit, I would say you cannot stand losing to someone else. So you will do anything. It's like, it's like you die, right? So you'll do anything in your power to beat that person. It's sort of like artificially creating, like you've got a gun to your head, you know, it's like life or death. That's like, what I'd say what that creates for them. Um, I guess it's like an aspect of motivation. I don't really like motivation. I think you can't really rely on it, but I think you can create short bursts. It's really good. <clears throat> um, what else? Let's say uh, confidence is confidence with competition. Mm, I think confidence comes from process. Would you say that it comes from competition? You don't get you, you don't get confidence beating someone else. No, nah, more... com- confidence comes from your process. process. Yeah. Your preparation. Look, I think you hit the nail on the head with the motivation thing. I I, I think that. Look, I know we're not big of, big fans of process. I mean, of uh, motivation, sorry. Like, you shouldn't rely on motivation. Because there's going to gonna be times when you've lost seven like seven games in a row, right? You're going to think, why am I playing League of Legends? I hate this game, you know? It's like, you know, you got to bring it back to why you enjoy the game. And also, you know, it's like, yeah, you just can't... Because that's not going to be there for you. Well, again, we've got to remember, when, this is not for everyone. This is a small subset. It might even be less. It might even be 2%. It might even be 5%. Somewhere in that range. Potentially. I don't know. But, you know, we always we, we talk about Michael Jordan a lot. He artificially created competition to motivate himself. He would find any excuse. he make up stories. This guy said this on the court. So this guy said this on the court to and told the media yeah. this to, to, keep, to build something up to keep him. I, when I first saw that part of The Last Dance, I was actually, I was like, that's so interesting. I wonder how you could do that for Lee. Because, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, the difference between Lee and you actually, if you actually think about as well the type of person right? That's like more so of, of a gamer, right? I mean, obviously there's, you know, there's competitive games, but the gaming industry itself, the competitive aspect of it is very small, I believe still. Yeah. 
right? So it's a subset. Yeah, but, but, but think about the type of people that would choose to be more of a gamer growing up. Like if you're an ultra competitive person, you probably wouldn't you'd go be to playing gaming. sports. You'd be playing sports. So I feel like that in general, League of Legends, I mean, just gaming in general doesn't really attract those type of people. Well, what I would look, I would say the only people there, I would say, I would, okay, out of the people that are competitive in, in League, I guarantee you that they all had an older brother. Or they had friends. Older brother, yeah. They had to have yeah. someone yeah. that got them into it. Because they wouldn't have got into it by themselves. Because they would have been pulled in other directions. They had mm. to have somehow been, you know, put, this had to be inserted somewhere. Which, yeah, I think you're spot on. I think the, the, if you were to rate, okay, let's, let's say we have put a number here. We have competitiveness as a trait from zero to 100. And we were to take a look at the average person that goes into a traditional sport, their competitiveness, I would say, was it would be up there between 70 onwards, right? It would be 70 and above, probably. And then you would have the average person who plays solo queue. It'd be down there between the 20, probably the 20 to 40 out of 100, I'm assuming. Yep, I would um, agree with that. But look, look, we can. it's pretty safe to say that the you know if we were to somehow push this, let's just say we did that as an experiment and push the competitive nature of the game and say, look, it's it's about dominating your opponent individually, like this guy. Well, I, I, I think that's so difficult for the, 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 the general, unless you're really high elo and you're versus the same Because you don't versus the, the same players, right? You don't know who's on the other side of the screen. Com competitive sports is great because you get the... You know, like even like non-contact sports, right? You can still have like that contact aspect. Like, you know, soccer, you can get like physical True, stuff, yeah. You know? you know them, you see you them. You see them. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that guy's yeah. like, I hate the way that guy looked there. Or like, I hate the, right. you know, that guy pissed me off. Like, um, what that guy did there. What he did to my teammate. Like, yeah. I want to beat this guy, you know? But it's you, kind of, it like, it's a like breeding ground for competitiveness. That's in right. A way, but I think it? it's it's actually very difficult in Well, it's a breeding things. ground for competitiveness, competitiveness and it allows you to exert or, or, or let out frustration much easier doesn't it with a te like tennis or any That's any right, sport the physical, aspect, the physical of well. aspect of let of of letting it out you're sitting in the chair bottling up all your emotions bottled up you don't get to let out that it's like yeah. pent up testosterone just yeah Oh, he can't let it out. You're just stuck in this little No, well, chair. they do. They on that's where the toxicity in league comes from as well. Right, right? that's the outlet, isn't yeah. it? So, look, maybe talking about this year, you know, maybe this is only for the people that are already at the master plus Grandmaster Plus, you're seeing the same players. You could create some of those rivalries, and the reason, look, the, the reason, the main reason I brought this entire thing up, Nathan, you know, tying back to the F1 thing, you know, I feel like for me, I miss a competitive aspect of the game. Since I've gone away from esports, right, I've I've done my own, you know, we've gone to coaching, um, and even within my own solo queue, it's like process. It's me, ver it's me versus myself. You know, even in High Challenger, I don't. I don't verse anyone. I don't go into the game thinking this guy, I'm going to beat him. It's not. There's no rivalry in my mind. It's just me versus my. It's just like I'm just going to perform my best League of Legends, play beautiful League of Legends. Process oriented. I'm very process oriented. So I missed that competitiveness, and I was just reflecting last night when I was I was going to bed. I was thinking, I just don't have that in my life right now. I don't have something where I'm able to compete. Against someone else. Against someone else. Okay. Like just, I because I deal well with that. I love that. That's what I loved about the whole Die Wolves thing. The most fun I've ever had basically in my life was some of the times during Die Wolves when it was just, I'm going to find a way to beat this team no matter what. In, in the grand final. Especially I'm when it was just like, you know, the Us Legacy Chiefs, like there was that yeah, tension, that, that rivalry. That rivalry. That was fun. We, we were in our own little world. Like we didn't care about how good we were in relation to other regions or anything. I will do it whatever just, it takes to beat that team. We were figuring out. And I will, I, will, I will work 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day to beat that team. Nothing else matters. And that was, that was I loved that. That was fun. I, mean, I wasn't really involved with it. That was probably more fun for you than me. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it was even me being even around. You, yeah. You yeah. see, you're in that environment yeah. though. You hear that's all we talk about. It's like mm. beating this team. Mm. Winning. Winning, winning, winning. There was something about that. Even though this completely, it's on the opposite spectrum, isn't it? It's on the opposite side of the spectrum. Winning, we must win at all costs. And we're going to do this to win. And we're going to all put in the effort versus process. I don't know. I think they're sort of combined a little bit. Well, because I think we, 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 we messed up when we went too far away from the winning, I think, in 2019. 
because some when we players got the, didn't. Yeah, was that when we got the rookie roster? Yeah, but because I think some 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 players actually like that. They like they want to hear. They, they that excites them. Mm. The the victory, the winning. You know, there's something there. But anyway, maybe in general that's better for younger players coming up. And then as you get older, then you need to move more to process. That. Wait, so what do you mean? Do you mean be specific? You well, mean- I, so I think about when, when I'm when working with Will last year, right? When he was first climbing up to to um, to Challenger, like yeah. he would like, you know, get into these games where he was versing, you know, like Svenska and like, you know, other pro players like Dardock and stuff. And he loved those games. You know, he, well, I mean, he thought he, firstly he was getting pushed by them, but also that competitiveness, like he wants to beat that person. That's and, a that's a powerful and, motivating and, and force. And when he beats someone, he's like, oh, you know, I shit on this guy. Like this guy sucks. You know, like as much as like, I don't really like that, but like that was, that was, I think was a huge driving force for him, you know, to get, you know, now he's like 1.2, 1.3 help and those on Dignitas Academy, right? Yeah. I think that that aspect for a young player is actually really important. I've been thinking about it more. I think maybe I took this away a little yeah, bit from Will as maybe well, Maybe we right? did, yeah. Um, you know, I think that maybe the older you get, then you need to, for more of a like long-term sustainable career, but having that like really murder, you know, just, I'm going to crush this guy, this pro player, like I want to take his job, mm. you know? Well, yeah. What's it, what's interesting. I guess that kind of aligns with what I've seen so far in that F1 thing. Cause there was, so the, the, the second episode talks about the two Spanish drivers. One drives for like, I think it was Reynolds and one of them for like, uh, uh, McLaren. And the McLaren driver is the old school champion Spanish. He's like he's like a veteran. He's like the cha- he's been a champ multiple times. He's like a, he's famous. Everyone knows him. And the other Spanish driver, he's much much younger. I think he's only like twenty two or twenty three. And when he was ten years old, that guy was his idol. Ah. And he he yeah. literally met him when he was ten years old when That's he was awesome. the champ and mm. said, "I'm going to be like this guy. I'm going to be a champion." And so now he's racing against him, right? He actually improved himself, focused for like 12 years. Now he's at literally racing against him. And his goal isn't even to win the race. He just wants to be higher placed than that guy Mm. to be the highest, you know, place Spanish driver. And so like they showed this race where he was like, he was doing everything he could just to beat this guy. And he loved it, but he owned that. That was a powerful motivating force for him. Yeah. So it get me thinking. What if it, what what would happen? What effect on this guy's performance would it have had if that that driving force wasn't there? Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe and and we're just stripping point. that away. Mm. We're we're blindly stripping that away. Mm. I don't know, and we know Nathan. Everything in life, there's, it's it's not as simple as black and white. You, we want, were, you want to take things from everywhere, right? Well, you want you want to find the gray area. Yeah. Look, I, I I think you know just talking through this now with you, Nathan. You know something we I think. At the end of the day, we're gonna have a framework. You have to. There's no other way to coach. You gotta have a process. We gotta have a framework. That's that's where it starts, right? You start. Let's insert this framework. Kind of what you do with like a gym workout in a way. It's like you just do this. The found. Let's just get the basics and the fa- fundamentals and the framework started, and then we can like alter that program. You can maybe add in an exercise. He talks about that in that in that the five by five the the thesis thing. He says if you want to do a little bit more biceps, you can actually add in chin ups or preacher curls or whatever. So it's like. In a way, our process is the, the you know, this is our process. This is the, where we start. And if you want to add in a little bit more competitiveness or there's certain parts of it you want to alter yourself, maybe instead of doing three blocks, you want to do four blocks. Instead of two blocks a day, you want to do three blocks a day. Um, I've had some people as well, they, they, they like reviewing their games before the start of the next block, even though I'm not a big fan of that. But I think if you have, an, if you have your identity, you know why you're doing it. You, you can you can tailor it. You've had a crack. You've done the fundamentals. Now it's up to you to refine it. Is that? Do you reckon that's a hell? That because what's the alternative? The alternative is say, okay, here's the process. But then look, we can actually you know add in some competitiveness here and talk a little bit about more the LP and the wins and the dominate this guy. And it just doesn't work. I feel like it just gets too messy, doesn't it? Because I'm thinking about my clients. You know, some of my higher elo clients that are in master tier. I don't know how I would begin if I were to start talking about the competitive nature of the game at the beginning. Because where's the foundation? No, the foundation... It doesn't fit in. It- okay, let, let's say you're, you're, you're trying to... Maybe this is a bad analogy. You are training to go into a weightlifting competition, right? Yeah. That doesn't really start... I mean, let's say even you today, you know, you're talking about you want to do it as a hobby. And I was like yeah. saying, you know, like, you know, do you want to potentially do weightlifting competition? Mm. You said, yeah, no, no, not really. But but that didn't really start 
like you like if you actually think about your your journey right mm. you started learning from your brother that wasn't even on your mind no close, i would never right? have thought i would even get remotely close but to as you get better then ah, that can bring in it's like gotcha. actually i'm getting better is actually I'm, I'm more confident here i think i can compete Mm, mm. I think that that's maybe where that's actually more the progression again of league. It's like, you know, gold, platinum, you know, all that sort of stuff. You're not really competing um, until you get, and then it's like, and then you realize oh, you can you. compete. Is so you get, you, like it's analogy? like a choice to compete in a way. And it's, if that's for you, like master plus. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, that res that actually makes a lot of sense because my, one of my master tier clients, Josh never saw, I worked with him when he was plat two and he's got climbed from platinum two all the way to master now. And progressively, he's not just become more confident in his gameplay, he's become more confident as a person. And he's so process oriented. He's always spending time in the 1v1. We call it the dojo, the 1v1s. The dojo. And, um, and he's become super confident in himself. Like, I, he just seems like a different person, you know? He seems like a very, very different person. He, he actively tries to go to bed at, at a certain time. He's changed a lot as a human. And... Now he's talking about, you know, competitive stuff. He's talking about how he wants to compete. He's versus these players. He wants to beat these players. He never would have been able to wrestle with that mentally when he was D4. Like he was a mess. A platinum. D4. Yeah. He's a mess. No, he shouldn't even be thinking about it. You can't even think yeah. about it. Yeah. You, and, spot and, on. and that's you in the gym with your brother that week four, week five. Yeah, it would never you think have made about sense. Being a power, like competing in power. Yeah, it would like, never make sense. Yeah, that's fascinating. Now, what's it, in another case study, you know, talking about the F1, um, another one I've been following was the Chinese weightlifting team. And I watched a few documentaries about, because they're Chinese weightlifting, now the Olympics on, I got really into it. And uh, I've been following that Zhao Li, Zhao Li whatever his name is, and he he won gold. But China in every weight division, they just dominate. They win gold, gold, gold. And um, it got me thinking, you know, I wanted to learn more about the Chinese weightlifting program. Like, how does it work? Why are mm. they so dominant? Mm. So first things first, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of reasons for it. Like they have like a weightlifting school. They pick the best genet best genetics of the best genetics, take the top 1% of that, then take the top 1% of that from like the youngest age. They started like 10 years old. It's like this farm, this weightlifting Yeah, literally a farm, farm like a process. <laughs> yeah. And the people that get injured, they just they just put to the side, See, leave them. So the best ones left, they just, they have like the most the unbelievable best. genetics the and the most amazing coaching staff, right? Yeah. But there was an interview with the, I was watching this guy specifically and they were talking about how, you know, what kept him motivated this whole time. Because what, what, what I love, what I love about the Xiao Lujun guy is that he's the oldest Olympic weightlifter. He's 37. This was his third Olympics. He won gold in 2008 or something like that. He won gold in London or something like that ages ago. And he still had the motivation to continue weightlifting because he loves the craft and win gold in, now in Tokyo. So watched his interviews and he says, one of the most important things about, you know, why I'm still here was that I look at my teammates and their teammates also fucking good. So he is motivated. One of his biggest things where his motivation come from was seeing how good these young new weightlifters were and how good these other people were in his training area. I was like, holy shit, these guys are killing it. You know, these guys are lifting insane. So you have to push yourself and you're around these guys. The environment that he was within. Environment's so important. Yeah, his environment was crucial to the reason why he was able to continue to win gold. If he didn't have that environment, he said he wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have been able to continue that motivation to push, push, push. Because he got injured. He had to take a year off and he still came back or whatever. Mm. Oh, wow. And, um... And I found that so interesting. That's yeah, competition. Well, they compete with each other. Compete with each other. I mean, now you think about friendship groups and the brother, the brother, yeah, brothers, yeah. Stuff. I mean, there's like that uh, that group. Like, have you seen like in a, you know General Sniper? He's like they're all like super they're brothers. High yeah. yeah, I think there's like three of them or something. They're three challenger players. Like, yeah. think about that environment. Think about what they'll be doing. They'll be, always be talking about the game. They would be, um, yeah, you know, like the expectation is you're going to be like rank one. Top yeah, getting 10. challengers, nothing. Nothing. We've been yeah. there, you know. Get get better than that. And I think that's as well. Like, like think about. So now, actually, let's bring it back again. You mm. know, talking about the type of player that goes into the game, right? Yeah. Go into league. It's like now you actually need to aspect. It's like they they not only would have to be a competitive person, they would also have to have a competitive friendship group. Yeah, because I actually think I have some competitive people in in Salto and stuff that are like gold and stuff, but they never like took it to the next level because they didn't have really anyone else around. Mm. Yeah, same. So, yeah. so, so think about how we're stripping things down. It's like even more unlikely that you're going to have hyper competitive people. Yeah, their friends are very likely. That's usually the case. Actually, most people 
their friendship groups aren't, they don't even review, they don't want to improve. They just play for fun. And that influences you in a way, mm. doesn't it? Your environment obviously has a huge impact on your league journey. Well, let's say, you know, you jump on Discord, you know, and they're talking about their, their you know, their, their bronze or just normal games problems, right? Like that's not going to help push someone. And I think that's why a lot of people love our communities, you know, Salto and MLA, because I mean, I had, you know, uh, John who was, who was in there was, um, saying he, you know, he loves Salto because it's like he got to meet other people around the same ELO, solving the same problems and that, you know, more competitive environment, you know, obviously review sessions. He just didn't get that. All his friends were like silver and stuff like that. Yep. hundred percent, man. So it just shows that competitiveness has a, it has a place for the, for, for people, certain people. And, you know, there are probably going to be some people that are happy to be competitive early on in the journey. Other people probably not so much. I don't think there is a cookie cutter solution here. I think that it's worth thinking about though. And actually one other thing as well that they've done Calvin and Bryce and they have on their status, how much LP they're above each other. They're like diamond three, diamond two. Right. It's like 50 LP above Bryce. Yeah. And like, that's competitive as well, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's definitely. Great. And for people who want to do that, they can do that. Yeah. It's not for everyone, but I mm. think it has a place. So I think moving forward, I think it's something I need to think about in my coaching, maybe especially with my higher ELO clients, because I feel like it could be an extra form of motivation. Michael Jordan did it. There's a lot of other athletes now that have just shown examples where competitiveness and environment and surrounding yourself with people that want to compete, um, you know, has a place. And I think for me right now, what I'm going to try and do because, I mean, what I said to you today was like, oh, do I, should I try and go back, you know, coach some on the side, coach some like um, positional coaching for like a competitive team. But I don't, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that there. I think where I'm going to have to get it from is from, from solo queue. So right now I'm at a stage where I'm like rank, I'm hovering between rank 19 and rank 15. Like what, like one one win gets me up like four ranks. Yeah. I'm very close to the top 10. Yeah. Maybe what I can start to do is start to like take it more... Let's start introducing a little bit more of the competitiveness. But like this guy on the well, ladder. I mean, I mean, the way the matchmaker would work is you would be against another like 900. LP yeah, I'm always just get back. You know, okay. Yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah. That's great. That'd be right? a great little thing rather than being like, it's me versus myself. Like I'm going to dominate this guy. I'm mm. going to, I'm going to really hone in on this player. Like just, just get specific. These are the players above me. If there's one of them on the enemy team, you know, just use that as an extra form of intensity. It's, it's an intensity hack. In a way. It is, yeah. I view it as like kind of like a, a pre-workout. Like, you know, those pre-workout supplements that mm. people take before going to the gym. It's like a... You're, it's in, like you're a, in the champs, the lobby, you know, the, the thing you see to, in the game. You know, like you're looking at his <laughs> name and you're looking at the matchup like, oh, I'm going to just yeah, dominate literally. this guy. That's what I got to try and somehow conjure up. You know, I got to figure that out. So... Um, it's like last game, like, you know, he beat me, but like, you know, something happened this. I'm not going to let that happen this game. I'm going to just dominate in this game. Yeah, I'll have a crack. I'll have a crack. The only problem is right now I'm, I'm, I'm not really able to play that much on my main because I'm still playing Keanu on my Smurf account. But um, yeah, I'll have a go. So what I'll do is I will... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, for the games that I do play in my main, I'll try this approach and then I'll do an update next episode. Is this something you're going to look to do as well? or Because you, you would have the same players. Yeah, but I is mean... That, is that something you miss? It has to be something you miss. I, I, I personally have just missed thinking about it. I've missed it a bit. I mean, I'm still making some critical errors in my games, Curtis. Like, I can't really compete against people with my... No, but that doesn't mode. that doesn't matter, I don't think. Is that think. does not matter? I don't think that matters. I think that that's just... it's a, Again, it's a hack for intensity <laughs> in a way. I'm just trying to win games, Curtis. <laughs> that's what I'm trying yeah. to Yeah. I've dropped like 150 LB in the last couple of days. Yeah. I'm just trying to get back to 500. Oh. <laughs> That's my step one. Okay. And then, you know, it's like, it's like I'll start thinking about weightlifting competitions when I can actually hit the fundamentals more yeah. consistently. I yeah. mean, maybe that's a cop out. I don't know. I mean, you do you, man. Um, cool. So we'll put a pin in that one. We'll come back to that one. I also have here something else I want to talk about. So I want to talk about... um. You know, we, a common question I get asked is something about like controlling emotions. You know, I think we touched on this one of the other episodes. We touched on, um, you know, replacing emotions with other feelings, right? Well, you can only feel one thing at a time, right? Right. And you can't just, you know, we're not robots, right? Where we don't feel anything. So I want to step through, I want to get very specific about an, uh, an experience I had yesterday. Okay. Now there's a player, certain player in in O Solo Q who hovers around, I would say hovers around three four hundred LP, high a one trick. 
extremely toxic. Um, and they, I, I guess what, there, there's something that does aggravate me about that player. I know this is, again, I shouldn't focus on the players and stuff that I'm versing, but because we're in a smaller server and you're already in Challenger, you see the same players all the time because I already know what I expect. So I just mute all every game. I mute this guy specifically because I don't want to deal with his crap. And um, his view of the game is completely flawed. And he, you know, in, and I don't like saying the word, but in a way, Heimendinger has allowed him to cheat the fundamentals. He doesn't have a good thorough understanding of the game. So he plays Heimendinger bot. He doesn't even play me. He plays Heimendinger bot. Anyway, I had this game where I was dominating his fizz, playing beautiful game, identified my secondary win condition, ticked all the boxes. Um, I, yeah, I literally ticked every box. And he went, he was playing Cogmore bot and he went AP Cogmore bot for some weird reason. And it was a very simple win. It was a very simple win. They just had to minimize. Repeated to die and then die again. Spam FF, die again. Um, And he started spam pinging me because usually I mute all then unmute ping so I can kind of see and like see what they're pinging. But then start spam pinging me for like trading sides of the map. But I can't ever help a 0-3 Cogmore, right? The game's over. Like that lane is done. I'm not Mm. touching that lane. Mm. Anyway, the game was even still free, but constantly, you know, he made the game harder and harder and harder. And it was just a win. And we ended up losing the game. Look, I didn't play, I played close to perfect. I played one of those very close to flawless games. Made like one or two mistakes in the end of the game. And um, I was frustrated. I was, I was, I was angry and I was frustrated. I didn't, didn't type, didn't say anything. And, um, and I want to use this as an example to really highlight what my what specifically what goes on mentally when I have a frustrating game. So first things first, we're not robots. Just because we're not toxic doesn't mean we're not. Ro- we feel things. We feel emotion. So absolutely frustration. Absolutely. Sorry, I have frustration in the game. I don't really have a problem with dealing it in the game. I think what I did in the game was I just I just knew my identity. I knew what my win con was. I'm always re- I'm always calibrating in the lull states. Like, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? So I don't really get a time to get tilted in the game itself. For those of you who do get tilted in the game, I've recommended this many times within my program. Deep breathing. A few deep breaths. Three long deep breaths when, when you you're die. dead. Come back. What's next? Identify the wing con. What's your role on the team? The high quality questions. High quality questions are great for calibrating. Now, for me... That's just my default response. I'm getting into it, whatever. Now, after the game, that was where I was pissed. Because I lose, I was pissed. Now, I feel like I've rec- I literally recognize my frustration. Like, I, I kind of see it. Like, I, I, I know it's there. I'm like, okay, Curtis, you're pissed. I, get, I, I, I don't even really get into a review because I'm actually pretty angry right now. And um, what I've noticed is that I cannot, when these games happen, I cannot simply sit in my chair and press play again, queue up. Yeah, it's probably not a good It's idea. not good. No. You cannot do that. When you have these very frustrating Especially games. Especially, if that's the case, you can't be on that same team with that same person again. You can't be in the same game. No. You have to just not play. Like, that's actually a bigger one, I think. you you got to leave you, the queue. you got to get into a new challenger yep. queue. Because that's the thing as well, is that we if we queue up again, you're going to get you the same player. You will get the players. same player. Yeah. So... Um, I chose to end my block. I think it's a good decision. Yeah. And I chose to end my block. Those are games where I was very frustrated. Mm. I chose to end my block. Mm. Didn't say a word. Good. Move on. And I had to get out of my chair. Good. And it took me, it took me like, you know, a minute or two, just walking around, have a bit of water, leave the room, go to the toilet, whatever. And then that minute, that, that minute or two where I'm drinking water, I'm out of my seat. I'm out of the room. I'm away from my computer literally gives me it's like a it's like a way of preventing me from doing anything silly in a way and, and allowing me the steam to cool off that the heat mm. to cool down mm. and that's my way of dealing with it and then i come back take a quick look at the review i said okay I, i'm not in the right i'm not i'm not in it today i, I don't want to i don't want to experience that again i don't want to sit in another 30 40 minute queue to get the same player I can't, I won't be able to control it next time. I recognize that. I knew if I sat in another 40 minute queue to get that player on my team again, I don't think, No. I can't. You won't be playing. I won't be playing at my best. No. I won't be playing, I won't be expressing my best self. Because if the moment it starts looking like what you saw in that last game, you're going to check out. Oh, I'm going to check out mentally, yeah, yeah. straight away. And 
this is important. What Nathan, I think this is important to talk about because you know we we're, we're such a big advocate of the importance of just not being toxic and pl- expressing your best self and not getting sucked into all the externals. You know, everyone needs to develop their own toolkit for this exact thing. Dealing with the frustration. I mean, I even say dealing with. Remember, remember what we talked about was the last episode. It's about how you react to the situation, right? Having your toolkit to deal with these situations is important to develop. Yep. You go zero three in a block. You how do you zero react? Six. Yeah, and look, 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 Nathan. There are going to be well, anyone that says you can sit there and instantly go into the review after a frustrating game and get the max value out of your review and continue to play at high intensity. No, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. It's okay. To take a five, 10 minute break, it's okay to literally get away from your computer. That's highly recommended. Now, what's interesting as well is it's it's very important you give yourself a pat on the back for not react, not not allowing your anger or frustration to act for you. Yeah, control. You're not in control of it. It gets out of control. Now, this ties into the, 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 the other point I wanted to make. So I watched a movie, Taxi Driver, over the weekend. Brilliant film, Martin Scorsese, 1976. Absolutely exceptional, highly recommend. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give it away at all, but essentially the, the TLDR, like the rough high poly, you, you won't really, you get this from the synopsis anyway. It's like an ex-military guy, P, he's got PTSD and he's not in a good state mentally. And he's, doing, he's, he's just a taxi driver. And um, it got me thinking, you know, you know, PTSD post-war sounds like a very a miserable and incredibly terrible, like sad thing to go through. It's awful, absolutely awful. And um, everyday events, his normal day, like everyday life was, the way I viewed it is his entire experience of life from that point onwards left unhealed was as though he was looking through a, a, a tinted, like a lens like, ro- like, you know how the quote, there's like a saying that rose tinted glasses, yep. but he was looking through everything through like a very negative lens and this shaped his worldview. And because he never, and uh, you know, in order to say he recovered from PTSD, he got therapy, whatever, the way I envision it as an analogy, he's taken off those glasses and he can see things for what they really are. He wasn't able to express who he was. He wasn't able to express his best self because he had this this view, he had these, these glasses on. And I tied that back to my experience in solo queue. I'm, you are a different person. You're a different version of yourself when you have these experiences. The way, in that exact moment, if I were to capture that feeling I had, it's very easy to undo all of the beautiful work that I've done with a few simple sentences. Very, very easy. And in that moment, it may seem like the right thing to do. It might seem like this is logical, but because you've got these, you've got, you're not seeing things for what it really is. You, you need to take the time to remove those glasses. And if you don't remove those glasses, you keep them on and you, you, you can, you make decisions with these glasses on. You're going to set yourself very, very far back and you're going to undo all of this beautiful work that you've done. And I think what I've understood intuitively, Nathan, is that I have to remove these glasses. I got to shut up. I got to not talk. I got to not do anything. I got to not act until I figured out a way to get this off my face. You have to get the glasses off. I got to get the glasses off. For me, that was leaving the room, getting the water, going to the toilet, whatever. For other people, they, and for me, I, I, I even then, I, I don't think I could have kept the, I, they would have come back on instantly if I played again. I knew it. So I, I had to stop. That's great. That's good self-awareness. And that is a skill that you do, you're going to develop. You're not going to get from zero to that. It takes a long time. But it's, that is the analogy that I think guys me. I remember watching the film. Like, that makes a lot of sense. I like it. You know? Well, I, I mean, the, the, obviously, you obviously didn't finish the three block there. But, um, I mean, that's, that's part of why we talk about the three block method. That's where it was came about. It's like... It's sort of like helping you remove those glasses and then you don't go, you don't play 10 games in a row and then, you know. Spot on. Go through Well, that. in a way, it's the three block wide's great is that even if you were to play with the glasses on, you can only do so much damage. That's right. You can only do so much damage. <laughs> That's the thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, 
yeah, I think that's a good analogy. I mean, I mean, these are some of the tools that I use. I mean, I, I mean, I did go zero six. I think I've lost like f- something like twelve of my last fifteen games, something like that, right? And I mean that you know, like there was some games that I I, you know, I could have played a bit better, but overall there's some pretty like out of out of my control games, right? But it's I'm just like I'm very confident in my ability, you know. It's like, and then I have that one game. It's like you know I understand my level of skill again. Like you know if I keep this up, I'm gonna be climbing again. Like that's that's where I go. I'm so like, that's I'm so you never you never get the glasses. No, I'd say no, I don't. Like e- even these games that were like someone else was really frustrated. I could tell. It's like I understand from his perspective, but I'm sort of just confident in the long term. I mean that's where I always go. So it's like your your mindset's so rock solid that the glasses never even come close to coming on. No. Gotcha. I mean, there's definitely frustrations. I'm like, like you know, like let's say in this in a bit of a game, I'm like, you know, fuck, like you know, if he listened to this ping, yeah. or if he just waited like five seconds while I finished this camp, so I could get a level so stronger, so I could go for the fight or get level six, mm. it's like, oh, this would have been a different game, right? And it's true, but but you've always been very good at controlling your emotions. Yeah. that's your skill, like it's, one of your I biggest traits. Skills, you've yeah. always since I've known you from the beginning in high school, you've been exceptional at emotional control. You don't act on if you get frustrated, you don't act on it. You let go things very fast. Where do you think that came from? Oh, I, I talked about that. I developed that from gaming. From WoW. From WoW, because I had the huge ego. I was that person, you know, like mm. blame me, blame me. And then I just realized I didn't get my... It's super simple for me. Be emotional. Don't let it control equals bad results. Right. Don't do that equals good results. It's incredible that lesson you got from wow that's literally and then i brought that to league and then that was it i, I feel like that's a, that's helped you in life oh yeah it's carried me for sure the amount of like just thinking back when i worked with you in die wolves like the amount of such scenarios where you could have taken a, a very negative made a terrible situation for yourself if you had acted on those emotions it could have been disastrous. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's always been long-term thinking for me, and maybe, and that's my detriment. That's where my procrastination mm. skills go from. Go, you know, to right. And um, but yeah, like it's just that's just where I go. I'm just very, very good thinking long-term. Fascinating. Because like in the short-term moment, like right, like like let, let's say if you say something super toxic, right, that gets you banned, right. You're not thinking about okay, I've lost my account. Let's say you get permanent banned. I've lost my account. Now I got to start from scratch again. Do you see how like, it's not that's, logical? It's not logical. Yeah, but the only reason you're able to come to that conclusion, Nathan, is because you're able to. You don't act on emotions. That you just simply have a level of discipline with your emotions that is the extreme. Yeah, I'd say it's discipline. Yeah, it's just raw discipline. You have this raw mm. discipline with your emotions that I've, I just don't see. I've n- have never seen before. Mm. More than anyone I've known. But you had that from an incredibly young age. Yeah, I learned that this earlier. But I was like fourteen, fifteen. It's incredible. It's yeah. such a huge skill, regardless of the procrastination thing, but your your simple ability to feel an emotion and say no to it or just... Be, no, I no. don't say no to it. I just, I understand. I just, I just let it, it just lets go. Like, again, I, I bring back, go. I bring back, it's like, okay, you know, like, because I think bottling, you, I think, you know, people could interpret that like I'm bottling it up, but like, I'm not. No, like, you're not. Yeah. Like, like, I understand. Like, I'm just a, like, this is, this is a, as well where I go in my mind. I'm just a goddamn monkey, dude. Like on this, on this rock on earth. Like, yeah. And the grand scheme of things, this doesn't mean anything, you know? Do you have this perspective that like, you've always had this perspective, Nathan, where we're just a bunch of monkeys. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm very like, you're I, I laugh at myself, like self and human behavior and, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Like I'm very, what's the word? I'm very, you know, like, you know, like, like in terms of like, you know, when people like Conan and stuff, like they like, their comedy is like putting themselves down. Self-deprecating. Yeah. In a way. Like, it's like sort of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the word is. Yeah, but you're doing that, but you're, you've always done that as well, Nathan, where you're, you're okay with putting yourself down, but it's not, you're not actually putting yourself down. Yeah, no, it's not a lack of confidence. It's not a lack of confidence thing. So what you're able to do is you're able to say, you're able to realize I'm not where I want to be. Like there's all this room for growth, but I'm, but I'm okay with that. I, I, I know where I, I know that I can get better. So therefore you don't lose confidence. That's something you've always understood, Nathan, way more than me. Because for me, I was the opposite end when I was younger. <clears throat> I would say I'm not good at this or I, if that's what really, really good looks like and I'm not there, therefore I'm insecure or mm. I'm not confident. Like I wouldn't be able to think about that I wouldn't be able to think of someone else and where they're at and not be either jealous or insecure or feel bad about myself. 
you know, I, I just couldn't wrestle with that. Whereas you, you're able to think, okay, this is, this is where that person's at. This is the, these amazing people exist. I'm a piece of shit. That's okay, because I can get there. And it also makes sense how they got there. And it makes sense. I'm not confused. So that's just an incredible growth mindset. You've always had this incredibly strong growth mindset that I guess it all stems from, from wow, right? I mean, well, where else could well, it come Yo, from? it's like, just, just again, you get results and you don't get results. Like, that's as simple as it is. It's like, if I do this, it doesn't work. If I do this, it works. It's incredible, Nathan. Um, so you highly recommend watching that movie, though, Taxi Driver. Yeah, I like that. I love that analogy. That's great. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, last episode as well, um, we had, what was his name? Greavesy in the mailbag. Mm. Spoke about meditation. Mm. So, uh, look, I had one of those moods yesterday where I just felt like I had a lot going on mentally. Like, you know, sometimes when you just feel like there's a lot floating around and you're not, pr- you're not really feeling very cluttered. You're not clear. I'm not clear. No, clear. I felt clarity re- having clarity. I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't have clarity whatsoever. And I just wasn't feeling at ease. So what I did, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take it, take a note out of Greavy's book, go back to meditation. Let's try it out again. Cause I, you had it. I used to do it back in the, in the past. I'm going to have a go. So I sat on the couch and did the classic, you know, the transcendental meditation, had my little mantra. I don't even know how long I did it for. Because I was like, let's let's have a go. Because I feel like I don't feel good right now. And what I love this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through my experience with meditation, okay? And specifically what went on mentally. And I would love to hear what people's experiences were alike with meditation as well in the comments. So I start there. I got my mantra going, breathing through my nose, whole shebang. And as you go further into the into the mantra and you, you're getting into it, you feel as though your brain is finding a way to try and escape. It's trying to find a way to stop doing this. It's it, it will it will hyper focus. It will try and find any excuse to not focus on the mantra and try and like listen to any noise. No, I mean, it's looking for the dopamine fix, man. Yeah, it's looking it for the dopamine. It's like yeah. escape. It's like Curtis, don't do this. You know, go to here, go to here, and and I'm like trying my just best. Go to your computer, just watch a YouTube video. That's so much more. Or check your phone yeah. or something. And like, I can feel that. Like, mm. I can feel I'm being torn in multiple... I'm getting dragged, but it just overcome it. Boom. Just keep bringing it back to the mantra. Keep bringing it back yep. to the mantra. And it gets it gets more... It gets harder. It actually gets harder and harder and harder to do it up until a point. And then you reach this point where it's like just zen. Yeah. You get to a point where that you've you've basically said to your mind, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. We are doing this right now. And you achieve this sense of just... Again, I'm going to go back to that control delete. You're going to the task manager. You're just removing all the shit. And I and and I remember my um my girlfriend was on the couch reading, and I I got out. I, I finished my meditation, and she like asked me a question, and I was just there was nothing there. Yeah, like I was so at peace. Mm. It took me a while to respond because I'm mm. just so, there was just, I was overwhelmed with how clear my brain was. I was completely at ease. There was no anxiety. There was no feel to touch my phone. There was no Netflix. There was no go to computer, check this. There was nothing. It's it, your, your, your view of time's also warped as well, isn't it? In what sense? Like you just feel like you lose track of time. Yeah. Like yeah. when you're in that, that I had state. no idea how long yeah. I was there for. Yeah. No idea. Could have been ten minutes. You're very pre- you're max present, mm. and you know, look, I give prop, props to Grievy, Grievesy because it was it was an amazing experience to to revisit that to to have that experience again because I hadn't done it in such a long time. Yeah, I needed to get into it as well, Curtis. You've you've got me excited. So you know, if you're one of those people that feels like they have a lot going on mentally and they feel like they need to relax, clarity is very important. Just knowing what's like, what are you doing? What's next? What's Why am I doing what I'm doing? Just having just clarity instead of just overthinking. Yeah. And you're, look, you're the master of not overthinking. <laughs> I'm the opposite. We're like <laughs> literally polar opposites. Yeah. I'm the most overthinking person possible. And then you've got the least overthinking. Simplify, just relax, simplify it. <laughs> it's all going to be good, man. You know? I mean, look, you, you've been a huge positive influence on me in that sense. Like, I feel like I've gotten better at it. Mm. Um, 
because like being around you, you're, you're, you're very calm, cool, collected, and you don't overthink. So it's like it's okay. Take and it. then when you when you start overthinking, it was like Curtis, I just said this is a bad idea. Or like <laughs> just bring it back again. It's like it's like literally, you know, you had an example of um, uh, talking about the clips channel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like trying to like you know should she do this as well and stuff. I'm like Curtis, let's just do the step number one first. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, relax. Uh, yeah. you know, like it's, it's like having all those ideas and everything. Dude, my mind runs a trillion miles an hour. So I need to, I think meditation, for me anyway, I think I think I would get a lot more value than you because you, you're, you're, you would get value from it, but you're the type of person that you, you let things go so easily. You don't overthink stuff. Like you're very present all the time. When I wasn't, when I, when I did meditate, it was super easy for me to get to that state. Right. It happened minutes. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because the, 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 you wouldn't have to filter through all the shit. You just go straight. Yeah, I don't have there. much shit going on there. Very simple, man. So envious, yeah. So look, for me, I, look, I might have to implement it in my daily schedule potentially, or maybe at least a few times a week. But I mean, by the end of the week, I have to. Dude, by Friday afternoon, my triple coaching block on a Friday, like You're I got to. done. I'm done. No, but that's not, that's exhaustion, not like. No, nah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not switched off. Like oh. it takes me hours no. to wind down it shouldn't take me hours to wind down okay it's just not good enough but anyway thought that was an interesting little thing to share might be worth hearing some of the experience from the bbc is out there um anything else nathan before we wrap it up we've got a mailbag i was gonna have a topic let's save it for next week then because we, we, we got a lot of we got a lot of questions yeah. right all right all right away we go <laughs> Song. Okay, first question here comes from Katsuki. We've had Katsuki again. Times, How many yeah. times, dude? I think this is his third time coming on. Oh, yo. He's, this is, he's got some good questions, though. This is a really good one. Changing your solo queue mindset is the title of this email. Hey, Curtis and Nathan, it's me again. We all know by now that in order to get better at league and to have a healthy relationship with the game, one should not tilt, focus on LP gains and losses. Focus on his ELO or how his teammates play. With that being said, isn't it easier said than done? My question today is, how do you get better at not doing those very natural and human things? How do you go from, number one, tilting after every loss to the point you struggle playing more than a handful of games a day, getting actually mad at some stranger because he didn't do what you wanted him to do, Focusing on your LP gains and losses and your MMR slash win rates. So from that to focusing only on your gameplay, not others' mistakes, caring about the long-term results over the short LP losses, stop being delusional overall and making up false narratives to protect your ego. Like, is there actually a way to go from the dark side of the force to the light side? Very few people are able to do it, and I don't know if it's something replicable. I really hope I can get an answer to this one because I feel like once on the good once on the good side of things, the path to success is straight and clear. Thanks for taking the time. All right. Um, do you want to kick it off? Yeah. So, um, I think we need to clarify this. So he says one should not tilt. Focus on LP gains and losses. Focus on his ELO teammates. Like. I don't think we ever say not to do it. Like, you just got to understand that that's a thing. That's not that helpful. You don't like really focus on it. Like you can't, again, you can't, you know, we talk about like pushing things down. You, it's not going to end well for you like mm. that. Like you've got to like sort of, again, it's like how you react to it. It's like, okay, lost streak. This is the LP gains. It's like, okay, you know, but like those things like understanding, like those things are a result of the process. Like you can't, I don't know if I'm putting this correctly. Yeah, I think like, I know what you're getting at. You, but it's not not doing... It's inevitable. It's impossible. No one on the history of the planet of the earth, even for, like anyone, even me, we've t I've tilted at some point. You know, I tilt. You know, focus on LP games, I can definitely do that, you know? Mm. But it's like, it's like sort of like I don't really, you know, spend time. It's like, okay, like, you know, it's happy, like, it's interesting. But this is all these other things that I do is more important. All right. Look, this is how I'll tackle it. There's two... Two, two ways that I would mentally kind of view it. First things first you got to understand is that like anything in league or like anything in life, it, it takes time and it doesn't come instantaneously. 
So the way you got to view it is that imagine I'm assuming he's a jungler. Uh, maybe I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. Mid laner or jungler. Let's just say um, in jungle to mid, there's a series of of fundamentals, right? And these are all individual skills. You don't just learn all of them in one hit. The way it works, and the way a lot of the time I teach, is that we're going to pick one of them, and we're going to do it well once every ten times, and then you're going to feel, you're going to feel what the benefits what of are that the benefits? are. That's right. That's so important. There's actually so many situations in my reviews, Curtis, where I say, like, I talk about the power of vision control and stuff, and I just say, like, I can't really explain it to you. Just do these things. And then just and then experiment, feel fail a little bit, and then feel like, like for example, I've been working a lot with um, a Graves player like Invadian and Jinx him with his Lee Sin. And he, he stuffs it up a lot of times, but he needs to feel like the invades, like the execute, because yeah. the execution of little bits, like you can't teach that because it's not replicable. Like drag Gromp up there, this situation. It doesn't make hit, sense. Hit the blast cone in that situation. Like I can't, yeah, you can't it's a that. mindset. So it, what I would, what yeah, what you're spot on, Nathan, because you can't, at the end of the day, in Lee, you need a reference point. You need something, a North Star, to point you in the right You've direction. You've done it before. Right, so stage three, that's why stage three is so important. So like, so that's why, for example, we a lot of the time we try to teach a mindset because a mindset will then, would, if you have this mindset, then obviously you're going to do these actions, these these behaviors, because it's, it, it's coherent with that mentality. So the exact same thing with a fundamental. Once you feel it, you, you, then you're like, oh shit, that actually makes a lot of sense. Now you might only do it one every 10 times, one every five times, whatever. But once you get the feeling once, it's like, oh, that makes sense. Interesting. Now I know what that feels like. Now I know what the benefits of that are like. And now I kind of know what happens if I don't do that. And then over time, you're going to naturally be inclined to do it more. So for example, when it comes to one of these things, like what was one of the things he said was like focusing on the LP or was like worrying about your teammates or some shit, right? Well, if you were to focus on that, let's see what you get from that. It will lead to a certain result. Alternatively, you focus on the process, whatever it might be, your reviews, taking responsibility for your games. How could you have pinged better? How could you have communicated your intention better? Whatever it might be. Well, try that and then see which one you like better. Which one gives you the better results? So over time, when you tick these off and you attempt to have a go at each and every one of these, the way I view it, it's kind of like a skill in a way. Each of them is kind of like a skill where you'll feel the benefit of it and then just naturally, you'll be more inclined to do it again. Well, the thing about that is you'll be able to do that decision quicker the next time because you'll know what it feels like. Like let's say, for example, a situation like, you, you know how we talk about not thinking, you don't want to think in League of Legends, mm. right? Mm. If you do something well, you feel you instantly you don't even think you just do the thing. You just do it, yeah. But but when you're first learning these skills, you sort of hesitate, and I found that's where some people get stuck. The biggest one as well is that I find is that very very difficult for um, farming junglers to understand it's like the place or what it feels like to invade and deny enemy jungle camps. Yep, it's so impossible. It's like it's so difficult to get those players moving to that mindset because. They've done it so many times where they've invaded and like no camps were up or you know they mistracked and then like oh well then I just like Nathan I, I stop telling me to do it. I know it doesn't work I just did it there like then they'll reinforce why it doesn't work versus the feel aspect of it. Yep, spot on. So yeah, you're right. So what you got to do is you literally got to in a way overemphasize the strengths of doing one of those things. So let's just say you do this the, you know the process like oh I'm I'm looking I'm not looking at my LP whatever overemphasize in a way the overemphasize how the what the benefits might be how good it felt that one time where it did feel good for you to not focus on the lp whatever overemphasize it then over time you're going to start to things are going to start to click these all tie in together and that's the other thing as well they, they all tie in together so like um some of them don't some of them are just common sense once, once you start like once you start getting the mindset so you might you might like hone in on two of them or whatever it's like okay nathan curtis tell me not to look at rpgs anymore they're telling me not to care about the lp blah blah blah. you might do two or three of them and it's like oh shit that actually makes a lot of sense why that all these other things now also don't make sense so it's like once you start trying it it's like a snowball effect in a way here's another example like let's say for the looking at the poro fest or whatever people do right yeah yep. you know it's like they look at like the win rates and stuff like that like maybe one thing you could do is like so don't do that right play towards 
a win condition, right? Whatever. And then maybe look after Yeah, it. look after. And then it's like, actually, he had a really bad win rate, but it worked. Yep. That could be a great That's way. That's so powerful, wouldn't it's so it so powerful. Be? Yep. Because then, then it's like, well, what I did before, like, I don't go to lanes, you know, but it's like, well, at the end of the day, you know, it's like a... A um, what's a really vulnerable mid matchup like a Z mid into Z fizz or something fizz yeah, and you know you just go there a couple of times and you know the the Z carries. Well, another another example. So I had a guy this morning was or yesterday was telling me a story about how he had three auto filled mid laners on his team. Right, he's a mid laner, and then there was three mid laners, and like the all, everyone was off roll or something like that. And instead of dodging, what he did was he gave the one trick mid lane. And then he played whatever it was. And he just played out the game. Like with high intensity. He just did his job. And um, they won the game. And he looked after. The enemy team had no order fills. Everyone was on That's roll. That's amazing. And he won the game. And yeah. like... That will break things down for you. It kind of just shows like it's possible. Yeah. You know? Mm, I love that. I just find that interesting. But anyway, look. And, the, and another thing you need to realize as well when, when it comes to switching this mindset is like... Um, I would say, um, like, like now, I mean, I, I kind of feel like we touched on it before, but don't worry about, like, like you said, what's the alternative? Like, you know, we, 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 we put such a big emphasis on, you know, not looking at OBG. Well, what's the alternative? Whatever you've been doing obviously hasn't worked. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here asking for our help in a way, you know, mm. that's kind of how I feel. It's like just through sheer common sense. It's like, if yeah, again, it's easier said than done though. It's that's easier really said point. than done, but like that should give you motivation to change is, things yeah. up. Like, yes, I understand it's hard, but do you want to continue to just do that thing? That's easy. Do that's you getting get you no results. results? Yeah. At the end of the day, do you want the results or not? Yeah. So I view it really simply. It's like, okay, this isn't working. I can either continue to do something that isn't working and pray that it somehow works for no real reason, which isn't logical whatsoever, or I change it. Do it's hard, but you know, what do you want to do? Maybe this is where the really hyper competitive people, because they understand this is not useful, and they'll just instantly just be able to block it out. Yeah, like, uh, competitive. Beat this guy at all costs. I'm going to figure out gun to my head. Well, another thing as well is like time. Like for me, I can't stand wasting time. Like the worst feeling for me is going out of a game where I get nothing. Mm. You know, I don't want to waste time being all, you know, nervous and all jacked up heading into the game. But, oh my God. And then the excuse I have after the game is that, oh shit, I wasn't expecting my best self. I can't I get jack shit. You missed by the skirmish here and it changed the game. And then, you know, well, it's like, nervous. It's, it's, as long as I go into the game with maximum intensity, I'm expressing my best self. I couldn't care less what happens. Mm. That's from a sheer time perspective. I don't want to sit here wasting three hours on a block half arsing. That's three hours where I can be doing anything else. Three hours this day, three hours that day. Within a week, you could be wasting 20 hours. Super simple. Over a week, 40, two weeks, 40 hours. A month, 80 hours. Yeah, in long term, that makes sense. But short term thinking, that's hard to... I mean, that's something that for me though, personally, yeah, I, I hate, time. I hate, I hate wasting time. time. <laughs> I'm a time guy. So whatever works for you as well, find what motivate, yeah. motivates you. Not everyone gets motivated the same way. Mm. So, I mean, there are a few random tips, but hopefully... You know, and surrounding yourself with other people that yeah, are like, I think that's a very important. Yeah, you're not going to, if you're in a group of toxic people that don't give a shit, then you, it's going to be basically mm. not impossible, but much, much harder. That as well. All right. Next question here is from Matthew. The title of this email is called Having Higher Expectations. Hello, Nathan and Curtis. For some reason, it feels natural to say your names in this order, like the, the Drake and Josh show. <laughs> So, so it's my name's first. Nathan Nathan and Curtis. Curtis and Nathan. Which one sounds better, Curtis? Nathan and Curtis. Nathan and Curtis, Curtis, Curtis and Nathan. Nathan. I think Nathan and Curtis does really? sound better. Yeah. Well, I don't know why. Anyway, I agree when you guys talk about following a process, trusting it and the incremental gains, like having a 52% win rate with improvement in your fundamentals and details instead of a 58% win rate. While you're improving with a 52% win rate, at what point do you set higher expectations than that? Having a 52% win rate feels average, and the analogy I think about is baseball. The baseball season is 162 games, and the top teams will usually have a win rate between 60 and 65%. This means a 52% win rate wouldn't get you to the playoffs because you're all you're barely above average. I acknowledge that the sample size in baseball compared 
baseball games compared to playing a thousand games of League of Legends is much smaller, but both sports require consistency. I also wouldn't expect a team with a 60 to 65% win rate in baseball to drop down to 50 to 52%. Do you think this baseball analogy is fair? Furthermore, if your main champion is in the 50 to 52% win rate range, wouldn't that be some cause for concern? I feel like I'm improving as a player, but I feel like I should be winning more games. I don't want to misconstrue this with deserving more wins, but as a player, it feels a little disheartening that I'm not consistent enough to win more games. I'm in gold and I feel like I should be playing better because there are more mistakes to capitalize on in this ELO. Thank you for your time. I mean, there's many ways to, 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 to talk about this. The first thing that comes to mind, right, is this. You can't compare win rates in any other sport to solo queue in League of Legends. The most fundamental reason, the core reason, is because there are a metric thing, a metric ton of things that are out of your control. You literally have four other players on your team that you have no idea what they're doing and why they're doing it and you have no influence. You're never going to play them again. Imagine in traditional sports, right? Um, like let's say you're playing baseball, right? And someone randomly on the pitch just disappears from the game. Just yeah. disappears. It's like someone internet, someone DC'd. Yep. Okay, so a, be a better example would be this. Pick up, pick up baseball, right? So let's just say you, there was a local uh, baseball pitch and it was just, I don't know how many people want a team of baseball, but let's just say everyone lined up, right? And it was like on a fence back in school, you know, you'd get picked two captains and it'd be like a captain on either side. And then like from these two captains, you could just like pick your team. And then every week you play, the teams are going to be different. You're not going to get the same players on your team every single time because it'd be different captains and then they're picking different orders and then people might not even rock up. It's going to be different players every single time. The chances that you're going to be able to be that impactful in a team game that you're going to have, have 60 to 65% win rate with different players every week, week in, week out over that many games, it's statistically incredibly unlikely. The only way you would be doing so is either you were so much better than them, you were like a pro baseballer coming into a random amateur pickup game, That's right. which is why those people that have high win rates, or your sample size is so low that you got there's a lot of luck in there again, um, and that you're, you're, you're picking the perfect games to play. So if certain players aren't picking, you don't get the right team, you leave. Or um, you duo and then you have a certain pe few people, a core people that you play with every time, and then that skews the, the matchmaking. They would be the only conditions in the baseball scenario in which you would get that high of a win rate. So it's not reliable to climb. In so, so in solo queue, again, you wouldn't get the high win rates if you're not doing or you're playing at your level of play and stuff like that. It makes, it's just common sense, right? Well, the, he says here, he, is, he thinks he should have a high win rate because he's in gold and he feels like he should, there's more of a stake to capitalize on, but... But you're not you're not capable of doing no, that, right? That's not the learn. That's not the journey progression. That's why if, that's what we talk about. It's small incremental yeah. improvements. League is a game of small incremental improvements. If you were if you were able to capitalize on these mistakes, yes, you would have a 60, 70 percent win rate. But you wouldn't be able to get to that level because you'd be a diamond player or something. You wouldn't you even be that. there in the first place. You wouldn't be there in the first place. Yep. I mean, people forget that, 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 yeah, they think that like, you know, I could have this, I should have a higher win rate because I'm in this ELO because there's so many mistakes being made, but you don't have the skill set to be able to do that. No, that's the point. That's, that's the, the whole that's, point. That's the journey. That's the, the progression in League of Legends. Very small incremental, like in the way, like if we're going to get very specific, view it like this. League, we say this a trillion times, League is an information-based game. All right, and the more information you can process and the higher quality of the information, the better quality decisions you're gonna make, therefore, the better outcome you're gonna get, right? At the most fundamental level, when you're first starting to climb through gold, your mental stack, you're only thinking about a handful of things, not even, you probably, you don't even know, first of all, you don't even know what to think about, you don't even know how to think about it, you don't understand the concepts, your mental stack is, is completely overwhelmed. So every game you play, we're slightly maybe expanding the mental stack or we're, 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 we're understanding those things better or you're processing that information faster. Which every single game is just one of them. We're just getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And you might even get a little bit better at each of these things, but because it doesn't, maybe it's one of those things that needs to be joined with something else. You might not even get any results. I've had that before as well. People don't understand. You can get better, but sometimes it doesn't actually win you a game of League of Legends until you join that with something else. So for example... Um, you can have amazing, um, you can have a, a amazing 
uh, wave management. But if your trading doesn't, if you don't utilize the, the great quality wave states to take good quality trades, it doesn't really lead to anything. Vice versa, if you have really good, you understand how to take good trades my, from a micro perspective, but your waves are always in a fucked up position, you don't get anywhere. You need both of those skills together to get really meaningful results. But you can't focus on them a lot of the time at the same time. You kind of need to get the theory of the wave management down, how the waves work and how to thin waves, how to like get them bouncing, that whole thing. Then we can look at the trades. Then sometimes even then, based off your champ, if you don't ward and lean, it, you can just die to gank still, so you still get no results. Sometimes you can even get worse results because you understand now how to take good quality trades. So your awareness of the jungle goes down because you're so fucking excited to take the good trades. You just die all the time. Yeah. There's so it, it, The game's a lot more complex than people think. Mm. So like, it's not as simple as that as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully my baseball analogy with the pickup game makes sense. Right? I assume that Matthew there had watched your 52% win rate video then. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is, you know, it, it sucks, you know, it sucks to, it sucks to hear it like that. It might be, it could in a way put some people off solo queue, but it's just, there's, there's no other way, no other way. All right. Um, next question here is from James. Um, the title of this email is called VOD Review Form. Hey guys, I've recently gotten a new position at my company and I'm able to listen to podcasts for eight hours a day if I so choose. <laughs> I'm climbing through the episode ranks and I'm currently on episode 24. However, I decided to listen to a new episode today to see how you guys have evolved and, uh, and ask a question. My question is, do you think that you guys could construct a step-by-step -step process for VOD review? Maybe in the form of a graph or Word document. For example, step one. Before even reviewing the VOD, assess the win cons. Step two, analyze matchup and discover how you ought to have been trading. Step three, ETC, etc., etc. I understand that everyone does VOD reviews in their own way, but I do believe a streamlined process could make adding this technique to your self-improvement process much less daunting and much more effective. I apologize if this topic has already been covered. Yeah. No, I don't think we actually have. No, so I literally, I mean, this week, I was going to do a article on it. Yeah. Because I got the, uh, the identical question in my Midland Academy. Because I have a lot of things like, like parts of a VOD review, but I don't have it all encapsulating it together, like step by step what to do. And it's actually overwhelming to think about because a lot of the ways, Nathan, we, we do a VOD review, we don't even really like, it's this, this intuition, it's muscle memory. For example, one of the things I realize that I do subconsciously is I look at a play and at the exact same time, I will simultaneously run through what the alternative would lead to. Like I'm able to play it out in my head. And you, we said this, I think in another episode, you said this with you, what you do, you, you play out what would have happened if you were to do this, you're able to do so as well. So you, in a way you're like, All right, let's say it's like an alternate reality. If I did this, this will, what would lead to if the Hikram alt went there or like he didn't alt there, he would be able to save it there and then get the kills. No, I'm not even thinking about skirmishes. I'm thinking literally if I, if I do this path, and I, you oh, know, it's a different game. Okay. It's, you know, it will lead to this. Yeah. Okay. And if that happens, it will allow me to do this. Or if I do this path and I don't show, they can't gank top. Therefore, I, I now get to get a full free clear. Therefore, this happens. Yeah. Like you're able to think about that really fast. Mm. Now, then, no, 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 the addition to that, Nathan, is you're able to to. So this is what literally happens. Ready? You you will look at what you did. And you'll see the outcome. Then you will play out the alternative in your mind and then you'll compare them mentally and choose one of them and, and know exactly why one is better than the other and the reasons why. And then you would even go to the extent to say, why didn't you do it as well? You're, you're able to do that in, in an incredibly fast period of time. And now something that I've completely underestimated is that for, the, for a lot of people, that's <laughs> it's not yeah i don't expect that's to. very difficult to do and i think what we have to realize what we have to talk about nathan is that you're not going to be able to vote review effectively for a very long time yeah hence why coaching is so important yeah. so the way i view it is like i'm going to try my article is what it's going to be about it's going to give you give some form of like a 
like a process with the caveat being like, this is just going to allow you to get like a, a, a bit out of the session, a bit out of the review, but you're still largely going to be clueless and you're still going to have to come to me with clips and a lot of questions when the community, that's what the community is all about. Cause you're not going to know what the answers are. You're going to kind of know what you can have like a vague idea about what you probably should have been able to do. But until you're like D4 plus, you've done a metric ton of reviews, you're actually just not going to know. Would you agree with that? Yeah. It's- yeah, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i trying to think now. Maybe an exercise I should be doing is get them to do a full VOD review. And you review, and their, review. review their review. Yeah, that's a great one. I think I'm, that's a great idea, Nathan. I'm going to steal that one as well. So you, you get them to review. And then... Yeah, that's great. Because then, then I think that's actually a very good form of learning because then they get to see, because they've actually mm, thought about it. Mm. And then um, then they can break down why they miss these things. Like, oh, that's interesting. I, I wonder why you That's it. I'm that. still on that. I'm doing that as a YouTube video. Great. Because that needs to be done. I think that's a really important piece of information. Wait, how would you do it as a YouTube video? What are you talking so about? I'll get someone from the Midland Academy. Oh, okay, I'll yeah. get them to send me their review. Yeah, yeah, that's great, dude. I and love then, that. and then I'll, and then I'll use that as a video, yeah. and then I'll highlight what they did well and like kind of the principles of reviewing. What do you reckon? I was going to do it as an article, but I think it'll make a really good YouTube video. Yeah, because I think it's good information to share to the community. Yeah, done. Because then that way answer this guy's question as well. Well, I mean, that doesn't really answer the question because because I, I I've I've thought about this like there's components of the game that you can review like. If I was to do a review of everything that I've looked for and every review, it would be pages and pages of documents. If what? If you look everything you looked for. No, but that's, again, there's a framework, Nathan. You're just not thinking deep enough. Potentially, Because yeah. the thing, that's what I've realized, that's what I said before, Nathan. What you're doing... Like, some fun- VODs have bad dragon set up. Some VODs do have good No, dragons. but it's the same fundamental thing. Nate, listen, so what I said at the start... Doesn't matter if it's a bad Baron setup. Doesn't matter if it's a bad Dragon setup. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the fuck happens in the game. It's about what you're doing mentally. Is you are looking at what you did, what it led to, then you're playing out in your mind what the alternative would be, and then you're comparing it. Okay, that's all you're doing. So that's not getting specific. What I'm doing is I'm getting specific. There is that. So what you would have to that's do? That's not a framework. You no, know, what you're doing is yeah, you're thinking about the specific scenario. Yeah, but the framework is not. You haven't thought about the framework that you're... So you would have to go reflect in your own time. You would have to go back in your own review reviews, Nathan, and be like, what am I doing here? Like, catch yourself. Listen, like, actually, that's what, I've, that what we do, Nathan. We catch ourselves. Like, what the hell are we actually doing here? Like, what? Why, how the hell is my yeah. brain working at the moment? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm always trying to figure out. Yeah, so we're trying to explain it. Because, again, I, the specifics don't help people. You no. Need to, you need to have the mindset. The mindset, the, yeah. The why are you thinking this? What alternatives? Because I, the, one of the initial answers I had, I think I did it over like a voice chat. Someone asked me that question. I said, yeah, all I'm doing is I'm playing devil's advocate and asking, like I'm playing devil's advocate to all of my decisions. And because I yeah. know how the decisions play out, I'm able to do it incredibly fast. fast yeah. I'm able to go, okay. Um, you also, you've also done the opposite and you know what it feels like. Yes. That's why you know what's correct. That's exactly it. So I've done the opposite because yeah. I've, I've played this champion a thousand times yeah. as well. That's why champ mastery is so important as well. Yeah, when, I'm, when I first was learning Diana and stuff, like I didn't know what the alternative was, was waiting for this fight until later. I was like, oh, that's how I meant to be playing fight. Oh, that's why my reviews on Kiana are dog shit because I don't know what the alternative would look like. Yeah, yeah spot on. 100% agree. That's why champ mastery is so incredibly important. You actually can't review really if you... Don't know your champ. You don't know your champ. You actually yeah. don't. You can't review. That's why actually what I did, I just watched Bayfang VODs when I was learning when I'm learning Kiana. Because I don't know what the hell to do. I don't know what the alternative would be. And then I see him do something crazy. I'm like, okay, that makes <laughs> now I know what the alternative would be. Yeah, now I know what that, that's possible. That's possible, yeah. Yeah. But when it with, with our main champs, you, you know that there's nothing else possible, really. It's like I kind of know that these are all the possibilities and this one is the best. Because it puts me in this position, because this is coherent with my identity, this is coherent with the wing con. You're like, you're ticking all these boxes. To be honest, I actually, I don't even know if I can do a video. It might even be too too hard. I think it's worth having an attempt. I can have a crack, but it's going to be bloody hard. I agree. I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, right now, I don't think I'm, I, that would be useful because it'll be so overwhelming in terms of that process, unless I need to really break it down more. But at the end like of the that. day, Nathan, what you're teaching there is how to like coach. Yeah. That's basically what it is in a way. And that's a goddamn skill you need to... It's a skill you (laughs) take years to develop. Yeah. 
Yeah, bloody hell, dude. It's a it's a really tough thing. I mean, I can have general things, you know, wing conditions, all that sort of Nathan, stuff, right? Nathan, but no, but at the end of the day, dance. Nathan, look, at the end of the day, all I expect from my people in the Midland Academy is to review the one thing that I told them to focus on. If they had never got a review from me before, I can't, I, they, I don't expect them to know how to review. What the hell? Yeah, of course not. They can't. So it's you can possible. only ever tell someone who's got coaching from a proper coach to review one specific area. Bloody hell, you just... Whoever sent that question, they just opened a can of worms. Yeah, that's great stuff. Something we need... To, I need to think about. You need to think about, Nathan. Yeah. I'll, great question. This good level. is from James. James, give it Jimmy. All right. <laughs> well, Curtis just tried to interrupt me there and was going to end, end the podcast smoothly, but now it's going to be just chopped. You guys will be like, Janky. wait, what happened there? Just chopped out. Just don't worry. All right, guys, that's the end of this, this episode. If you want to send in a mailbag question... Broken by concept show at gmail.com They're in the description below. Go down to it. You know, we've got, we're going to fill up our mailbag. It's getting a little bit light these days. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.